What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chris here from Signs of Life. How y'all doing out there? Back once again with another ambient masterclass. You know, I thought about... The reason why I'm here today is I thought about what made this channel great. And what made this channel great, in my mind, was the access and immediacy of information that we were able to gather during those early days of the channel. And now that we're here, over a year in, it's good to be back. I know, exactly, a free masterclass, exactly. Um, so today, we're gonna talk about how to make a 16 bar loop into a full track. And the reason why I'm bringing up this topic is because I'm currently going through it myself. You know, like I sometimes when I make these tutorials, when I make videos for you guys, I just make like snippets of a track and then I sort of leave it in a folder. Like that's the tutorials folder. And then I come back to it later and I open them up and I'm like, wow, <laughs> here's, here's exactly what I'm talking about, right? These, these sort of sketches that don't really have a beginning and an end. They don't really have a direction. They're just sort of moments in time. And you know, for me, this is how I started, right? This is when I first started producing music and I'm talking even before I discovered Ambi music in 2012, you know, that was 10 years ago, right? So we're talking, let's bring it back another 10 years past that. So we're like early 2000s and I'm sitting there in front of like Reason, Reason 2.5. And it was very like blocky, you know, you'd have like a instance of Dr. Rex or a loop of Redrum or whatever, you know, like anything like, you know, Maelstrom, whatever. And it would just be blocks on a screen. And I'd make those blocks, I'd put the loop markers up and it would just be like stuck in the loop, right? So that's where the whole title of this video came from. And the whole reason why I wanted to do this masterclass today was to help you guys because I learned how to break myself out of that and I'm gonna help you guys hopefully here today, all right? So as a reminder, if you like this kind of video, if you like these kind of masterclass formats, I do tutorials like this every single week on Patreon. So if you really like this channel and you really want to support me, please check out the Patreon in the link below. We're doing full track tutorials on there. We have tons of extra like presets. We have this Zoom live Q&A we do once a month. Now, um, I've got personal ambient one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can try that as an experience to try to really bring out the best of who you are as an ambient music producer. My Patreon is going off. And I keep saying that in every video because it's true. I posted nine times in the past week. So tons of extra masterclass tutorials on there and a lot of great content. So if you really like what you see here, please check out my Patreon. So that being said, let's get into today's masterclass, how to make a 16 bar loop into a full track okay so where are we let's just, let's just talk about where we are right now you know i don't know about you but over the past say two months i felt kind of held back a little bit a little bit restrained like something was pulling at me you know it's been harder to move forward and recently over the past couple weeks you know things started to get a little easier. It's like, all right, summer's coming around, at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, things are coming back online. So it's a great time for you to re-ignite and revisit your own creative process. And that's part of what we're doing here today. So here are the notes for today's lecture. Feel free to screenshot this, do whatever you want. This is what we're gonna be talking about, okay? So, this is, again, going back to the beginning of this video, this is the reason why I'm doing this video here today, because this is what made this channel great. So, we're doing it again, all right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna open you up with an intro. So now you guys got that screenshot, I'm gonna open up you with an intro. When I first started producing music, I fell into a loop. We've all been there. That spur of the moment, late night music making sessions where you sit down and you go to make a track and you start throwing some things together and you get a good groove going. Before you know it, you've got a nice 16 to 32 bars built up. Cool, mission accomplished. So you come back the next day, open up the track again, 
And yeah, it still sounds good, but you've just hit a wall. And that wall is what separates you from going the distance and finishing the entire track. It's that moment where you realize that in order to take this 16 bar loop into something worth listening to, it needs a ton of more work. Everything from an intro to cool transitions, changes in melody, even a hook, all the things that come with a really well-produced track. And at this point, you have two options. You can either A, break the track down, separate the parts and build up an arrangement, or B, abandon the track and start over again, only to fall into the same trap and get stuck in the same production loop that got you there in the first place. So the question is, how do we take a 16 bar loop, a sketch, or just an idea and make it into a full song? How do we do it? This is something that I forced myself to learn how to do. If I was going to move further on in my own music career, I learned a few things along the way. So here today, we're gonna to explore just some of the ways that you can jumpstart that creativity. Because this track here, you guys might remember, this, is the, this was the starter for the Glitch Percussion video. This is how it started. That video, which has been watched thousands of times now, this is where it began, right here. Right? I love this track, it's good. But what does it mean? What What are the whole, how are we gonna take this and make this into something that really stands out? That's what we're gonna talk about, all right? So, let's look at the notes again. Number one, identify your compositional goals before you make any changes. Now this one's huge, because this one is like, identify what you really wanna do with this music. If you have an album that you're working on, so to say, if you have like, if you have a, a, a goal in mind, like I wanna be on Sephira Records, I wanna be on Ultimate, I wanna be on Spotted Peckery, whatever it is. If you have that goal, you need to identify what those goals are before you proceed, okay? So after figuring out what you're trying to accomplish with the track, you can then set, you can adopt the mindset that in order to reach your goal, there's more work required. Like if you wanna get on, that label, project records, whatever it is, you have to set that and say, here it is. We often get blocked by being, feeling overwhelmed or having doubts of what's possible. So like, if you think I'm never gonna be on Exosphere, that's a big block. I'm never gonna make it to Spotted Peckery. That's a huge block. But if you push yourself past that point, you'll find that moving on to the less fun parts of composition is not only easier, but more enjoyable because we all know what the more fun parts of composition are. That's like the mo like this moment right here, when you're in the groove, everything's hitting, it's just, it's on. Because you've put your ideas into one basket and it's like, that's where the track hits, right? But the less fun parts are the parts where you gotta go and really introduce this stuff. You gotta, you gotta formulate that, right? You gotta, you gotta come up with a concept. You gotta come up with an artist name. That can be hard too. So just know I'm right there with you. You, you gotta, it's, it's all the things that come with being a professional musician. And even if you're a hobbyist, even if you're someone who just does this, like I do this sort of like for my own enjoyment, you still have to think like a professional because if you don't think like a professional, then you're not going to move and elevate yourself forward. That, that's what separates the professionals from those who are just hobbyists is they really have a mindset like I'm going to market this music and I'm going to make it as good as Carbon Based Life, Steve Roach, Solar Fields, Echo System, right? Okay. 
So as long as you have the mindset, that's the big point that I wanted to get across in number one, is if you have that mindset, then you can do that. I want you to think about that in a holistic sense. Not only that, use references. I say that in the end of this, in, in, in the end of these notes, but like really use references. You can put their track on your track right up at the top and say, all right, cool. That's how good it is. I know it's mastered and my track's not mastered, but at least I can AB that thing. That's why there's a ghost track in utility. We've talked about this before. Let me check in with you guys. Cubes in the house. You got Elohim. Isle Flows in the house. Inside the pyramid. Now on stream. Epilogues here, Francisco. Nice to see you guys. Kale Chunks in the house. Thank you guys for being here. All right, so let's continue on. Number two, using the intro, outro, and breakdown as experimental sketch pads rather than a copy and paste. This is a really hard barrier to cross. Yesterday on Patreon, I took this pedal right here on its maiden voyage. You see this? This is the box. The pedal itself is right there. This pedal blew my mind away. Like literally, I was like floored. I'd never experienced anything like that in my whole ambient career. I took the hydrosynth right here and I started doing some experimental envelope thing where it was all random and then Habit started listening to what I was doing and then started spitting it back out in chunks and then it went through the microcosm, through the poly moon, in stereo, through the big sky. I was literally, I was shaking. I had, my hairs were sticking up all over my, it was crazy. And if you're on Patreon, you see that. I was, I was literally floored. I couldn't even speak because it was so beautiful because I was just holding down keys and they're all in key and I'm playing a pad at the same time and the habit's just going dun, dun, and it's just continually three minute looping, three minute looping but it was continually like, surprising me with the, the parts of the sound that it would pull out and the filter movement is just mind blowing, mind blowing. Okay, the point of me saying that is, is if you use the intro and the outro as that, that experimental sketch pad, you can use that to really break the barriers of what you think is possible. Like use that as like, oh, I'm really gonna go deep into sound design here. And it's almost like you're starting over in a track, but you're not starting over. Once you build up an entire loop, you can use the lesser important parts of the track as an opportunity to completely try something new. And that's what habit is for me. It's something completely new. I'm not saying you have to buy a habit to make something new, but you have all the tools available. You can do this in vital, which is free or practice some experimental sound design techniques. Shake up your track with unexpected bits of sound that might not make it into the actual hook of the song, but rather sprinkled throughout to add texture, context, and invite the listener deeper into your world. So if you use the intro, say, as an, an, a chance to do something entirely different, that can be the one thing that separates your track from just being the same old thing that you always done to something that's totally new and unique and you love it and your listeners are invited in. Do you see how important this is? So it's almost like it's a track within a track and that's just the intro. Right? I see Martin is here. Martin, I used one of your tracks as an example yesterday. We were listening to I'll pull it up on Discord right here. I have it in the chat. Emission Nebula. And in Emission Nebula, Martin takes this like sketchy sort of soundy thing and he puts it in the intro and it never really comes back, but it's just kind of tick, 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 and it's like, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using sound as a way to invite your listeners in. But you have to experiment. You have to screw around. You have to make bad sound before you make good sound. I, had, I literally had the hydrosynth on one of those experimental patches that I made. And so it was like, all, it was sentient. The board is sentient. And you can see that on Patreon. 
literally had a mind of its own. It was just spitting out random loops and doing its thing, almost like a modular system. Oh, shook. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a short on YouTube. Hopefully, I don't have time today, but you, you get the idea, right? Habit is crazy. Okay. Now this brings me to the like, if you guys understand this whole that whole concept, good. Let's move further, because I really want to get into the this big main part, right? Because this part is sort, it's sort of like, you know, really grasping onto that. Behind us, we have this track, and I, this is a track that I was working on. So, what if you're in the 16 bar loop, right? And it's, you're just cruising along, and then all of a sudden, it does this. changed from one to two it was like oh wait right so this is a completely different idea based on the same thing so I introduced a new sequence I used I introduced a new bass line I took out the kick drum and the snare but I brought you to a whole nother place right still in key But this brings me to my next point, all right? Thinking of the entire track like a movie script. Creating characters and identities from the sounds themselves. Ooh. Like, that's kind of an esoteric concept. I don't know if anyone's ever, like, introduced this one before, but you guys all know the whole concept behind writing a movie script don't it's a very simple formula there's three acts and in those three acts you set it up it happens and it gets resolved that's way zoomed out but you understand try to imagine your entire track like a movie script and replace the sounds with characters Use this mindset to, to bring importance to your sounds as you introduce and as they introduce themselves. So you bringing importance to the sounds by introducing them as characters. One, it could be a pad that sits below it and then a sequence gets introduced and it becomes another character that's interacting with that first character, right? They have personalities, they have flaws, they have... Here's what I found. They have different qualities that make them unique, right? So as they interact with the rest of the sounds of the they give them more meaning and a unique voice of their own to bring out an even more personal connection to the music and your own personal musical vantage point. That's the point, is you're bringing sounds out so people can understand who you are as a producer. Your sound choices and the things that you're using are going to bring about your identity. And when you listen to good artists, you can hear their sonic signature in their sound. Therefore, when you bring out these sounds as characters, you are evolving this script and it's playing out like a movie. Do you understand what I'm saying? It sounds so simple, but like, when you really get in the nitty gritty and you're like, I'm designing sounds, you have to think like that. Oh, okay, here's here's the hero, here's the goddess, here's the here's the ethereal great godmother fairy who's coming in. And she's and she's coming in, right? Here's the evil you know, like it's like there's all these different elements that we consider archetypes. So the archetypes are the sounds themselves, and if you can interplay them where they're constantly, you can create more tension. The tension is what really matters. When I dropped that bass on you, it was like, ooh, like, what's that bass want? And then the, that sequence is trying to get free. Like, it's getting 
buried in the filter, rising above, rising and falling, rising and falling. You see what I'm saying? So now that we've done that, let's see what happens when we crawl back out. <laughs> the mini gritty. Nice one. Right? Because now the kick is back in, giving you that solid rigidity. The base has returned back to form, but you still have that sequence. It's still there. So it gives you another contrast and believe me these elements that I'm presenting you here today are not complicated not at all that's a single kick drum sample with a single instance of vital from anomaly to star front okay this is a single instance of hive tube Sawtooth. Simple sawtooth. Okay. LFO at 5 rule 1. This is another instant 5. Square wave. Provides a little different harmonic contrast. I've mentioned that before so many times on this channel that out of simple waveforms, you can create the most complex stuff and that's really all you need good composition and good musicianship can easily be achieved through simple waveforms sound techniques that's all it is and proper gain staging all right so now let's talk about this concept of the hero's journey. Now, this is a this is a pretty deep, like, metaphysical, you know, realm to dive into. I understand that, right? But like, why not? I mean, honestly, ambient is so esoteric. It's so space oriented. It touches the deepest parts of our consciousness. That when I hear ambient music, and this is how passionately I feel about passion about I feel about music is that when I hear things that evoke my sense of wonder I'm I'm literally that's it I'm in outer space like I it when I when I first discovered Amy like when I was my, my the origins of like when I first started listening to it I was like what is this I was so blown away by what the orb could do in the 90s I was like this is impossible it's impossible there's no way this is real like, how do people create music like this? What kind of gadgets are they using? What kind of, what kind of alien technology is this? I was so floored. I mean, you go back and listen to those albums, UF Orb or Orb's Adventures of the Ultra World in the 90s. And you're like, dude, that's crazy. That they could have the power to do that. At the time that they did, they didn't use a DAW. I mean, maybe they did. Maybe, yeah, maybe they did. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like it. It wasn't like this. Anyway. So that feeling is what I'm trying to trying to impress on you. That feeling that ambient music gives you. And whether it's this kind of music, down tempo ambient or space ambient or drone or like really up tempo Sibian, you know what I'm saying? Like let's talk about the hero's journey. Because the hero's journey is something that we find everywhere. And it's like, only because this guy laid it out for us. But I truly believe that somewhere in our own, it's like part of the, the code of who we are. Like, I honestly believe that the hero's journey is partially ingrained into us as human beings. 
there's something about our psyche where this this resonated so much that we took it to that level of like because you sort of like can live your life out and you're if you think of your this is damn important if you think of yourself as the hero of your story you can do anything you can literally do anything but you have to be the one who has to save the day there's no other way about it it's like you can't dance around the fact that in order to do something great you have to be great yourself therefore if you're going to do something on the level of like producing music which is heard by thousands and thousands of people or you're just going to produce music that is considered that quality level that you desire you're going to have to think of yourself as the hero who goes through a journey who goes through trials and turbulations and has conflict there's literal conflict and blockades and things that hold you back and if you can overcome that that adversity is what makes you stronger Therefore, if you become stronger, then you become a better producer because you've overcome all of those personal sacrifices. You've overcome all of those personal barricades to your own success. That's it. And I know this sounds like really high church for like a, a, per, a music producing perspective, but if you don't think of music production like that how are you ever supposed to do something that's worth anything to anyone because you don't have that same passion and that heart inside and if there's anything you can take away from this video it's that i'm giving you that spark of inspiration that's my job that's what i do i give people that spark of inspiration so they can take the essence of what i'm saying and translate it into their own lives that's it so even if nothing that I said today resonated with you in that, like, oh, I really can relate to what he's saying, uh, you know, like about the movie script and about the breakdown and the sketch pads and all that, take away the, don't even listen to my words, just take away the feeling of the conversation that we had and be like, wow, I'm inspired, damn. And bring it back to your own life and then take that and let that move you forward. Because like I said in the beginning of this video, we've sort of been like pulled back in a big way for the past month and a half I'm gonna I'm gonna toss it back to the end of April things started to really slow down and it got really confusing and it was like whoa like here we go and now we're going we trudged through May we got through May and then it's like now we're here in the end of June and we got one last gate to pass through us and that gate is coming next week and then we're gonna be off into the sunset all right about that there's a full moon on the 14th you think about that and you take that and you move it and you push yourself on all right so let's talk about the hero's journey the hero's journey using this formula can have a profound impact on your compositional mindset when creating music of any genre you can incorporate three main acts of the hero's journey or detail it down to the 17 stages there are 17 stages of the hero's journey and that's joseph campbell's work right it's up to you Okay. The first act, the first stage is the departure. The hero leaves the familiar world behind. When I when I first started producing music, I literally left my mind and everything else, my life behind. I was like, oh, goodbye. Like, see ya. It, it was all in all in 2012 we were all going through a personal i think you know collectively we probably went through all everybody went through a big change that year right i see it everywhere everybody's like yeah in 2012 i did this in 2012 i did that it was like that was that collective shift point where we all just ching and just got online and there we go right so you leave the familiar world behind though that you which you know is comfortable is when the hero leaves that familiar world he's like I'm in my day job, I'm in my office job, and then boom, all of a sudden I'm Superman, right? It's the, it's that thing. I'm living in the kingdom, living in the castle, and then I gotta go to the dark forest and I gotta battle. All right. The second act is called the initiation. The hero learns to navigate that unfamiliar world, and that's the 
part that you probably are in right now. A lot of you are probably in that world, learning how to use the tools that we have, learning how to make synthesis from scratch, learning how to sequence things in a way that sounds edgy, modern, electronic, ambient music that really grips your soul. That's probably the point that you're at. You're like, how do I do this and get to that? from my Patreon. If you want to learn more, join my Patreon. I'm going to show you how to do that. But this is what I'm talking about. Like, literally, we're all sort of in that initiation phase. And believe me, when I say I'm constantly in that phase too, I'm like figuring out as I go along, how do I do this? Taking audio cues from that, pulling it into my music, pulling it into my mindset to make myself a better producer. In the beginner's mind, there are several possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are a few. So once you get to that top level, you stop thinking about the possibilities. But if you can adopt the mindset of a beginner the entire time, you'll never run out of ideas. There'll, be, there'll never be a point where you're like, I've reached the end there. I, I don't know, I can't, go on, I can't go any farther. You always have room to grow. There's always things to explore. There's always new avenues which you can take. No matter if you know every single thing about a genre or about a, about a way to do something, if you, if you have that mindset of a beginner, the possibilities are endless. Suzuki said that, so I'm not gonna, that's, that's beginner's mind, zen mind. So just take that. The last act is called the return. The hero returns to a familiar world. You return, right? Now, some points along this stage might sound familiar to you, all right? In the first stage, you have the call to adventure. And I want you to think about this as it relates to music, because in music, you have the intro to a song. You have the intro, it's the call to adventure. It's that opening pad, it's that opening sound. It's the, this sound right here. The call to adventure. Something or someone interrupts the hero's familiar life to present a problem, threat, or an opportunity. Okay? An opportunity. What could that be? And even if it's not a hero that we're looking for. What if it's just that mindset? What if it's just that feeling and that essence? You're setting a place. I'm now on Europa. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like what? I'm now in this world. I'm now on, you know, lunar base Chiron. Like I'm literally on a, in a lunar base and it's cold and it's dark and it's there's wind outside and the landscape unfamiliar. This is the call to adventure. Okay? You adopt that mindset, things might start to change. Now, refusal of the call, unwilling to step out of your comfort zone to face your fear. The hero initially hesitates to embark on the journey. A supernatural aid. A mentor figure comes and gives the hero tools of inspiration they need to accept the adventure. mentor figure gives the hero tools and inspiration they need to accept the call to adventure. How much more clear can I make it? You see what I'm saying? Number four, crossing the threshold. The hero embarks on their quest. I give you the tools you need to embark on your quest. Number five, the belly of the whale. The hero crosses the point of no return and encounters their first major obstacle. 
Altus Music said, you're, what you're describing is exactly the way I create. Fantastic. If it's resonating with you, beautiful. Because that's what I wanted to get across. Part two, the initiation. This is the point where I think we're all at. At least most of us. The road of trials. The hero must go through a series of tests or ordeals to begin their transformation. Often the hero fails at least one of those tests. They often say that your failures are your greatest successes. They are your greatest teachers. If you fail at something, it means that you're doing something right. Because once you fail, you can understand why you fail. And you can begin to formulate a new plan to make something right again. The meeting with the goddess. The hero picks one or more allies and picks them out to help them complete their journey. Right? signs of life. They say, you're going to help me on my journey. I help you on the journey. You see what I'm saying? The hero might be attempting to abandon their quest. Typically, the temptation would be a love interest, but in our case, what could it be? Self-doubt. Maybe you don't feel like you're good enough. Maybe you don't feel like you're, you're worthy enough. Maybe you don't feel like it's ever possible to do the things that you really have ambitions for. Because I know that everyone has ambitions. And I want to say that if you have that spark, if you have that ambition, there's a possibility. And there's if there's a possibility, that leads me to point number five. And I'm going to get there in a second. All right. So, atonement with the father. The hero confronts the reason for the journey. Facing their doubts and fears of the powers that rule her, his or her life. Saturn, this is a major turning point in their story. Every prior step that has brought the hero here moves forward from this moment. You are tested. You are tested. By outside influences, by authority, by anything that could hold you back from that. Number 10, apotheosis. As a, role, as, role, as a result of this confrontation, the hero gains a profound understanding of their purpose or skill. Armed with this new ability, the hero prepares for the most difficult part of the adventure. So once you get a handle on this stuff, once you get a handle on the tools, once you get a handle on this whole aspect of sequencing, composition, creating ambient for ambient sake, whatever it is, a concept, an artist's name, whatever it is, you have to be ready for the most difficult part of the adventure. Number 11, the ultimate boon. The hero achieves this goal he set out to accomplish, fulfilling that call that inspired his journey in the first place. That's why I told you that when I was starting out late night, just doing loops and reason, I was stuck. I was literally stuck. I was like, I would sit there and, and put this synth called Vanguard on an arpeggiator. And I would go, and I would just do that. Like, oh, and I'm like, damn, that's dope, man. It sounds really good. But where did I go with that? Nowhere. But it was that, it was that, that moment, that concept, that, the thing of like, you have to figure out how to get out of this. You gotta, you gotta figure out how to work your way to doing something great. And it wasn't until 2012 when I sat down and I said, there's no way. There's no way that I'm not going to start a track and finish a track because I have a goal in mind and I'm going to force myself to sit down and do it. Adrian Smith, good to see you again, man. Act three, the return. The refusal of the return. If the hero has, been, if the hero's journey has been victorious, he may be reluctant to return to the ordinary world of his prior life. Even if you're successful, you might be like, oh, man, this isn't what I wanted. This is not as good as I thought it was going to be. Mindset is also critical. However, the space affects the mindset. You're very true. It, it, the 
spaces, everything. But just know that your time will come. The cycles of time work in like huge blocks. And even though you might like be like, this is the moment, it might be the month, it might be the year, it might be the decade where that big breakthrough comes. Just know that. The magic flight, the hero must accept, must escape with the object of his quest, evading those who would reclaim it. You have to take that success. And once you rise further, you will be met with outside people who are doubting you, telling you you're not good enough, telling you it's, it's, that's what comes with being a public figure. Literally. It's just ridiculous, but I, if we all thought like, if we all understood that we're all unique and individual and we all go on this quest, therefore, what's separating you from me from you? It's not much. So why would you ever be that person? Nobody watching this video would. Yet, I don't know who's out there on YouTube. I get weird comments all the time. Rescue from without. Mirroring the meeting with the goddess, the hero receives the help from the guide of the rescuer in order to make it home. Finally, the crossing of the return threshold, the hero makes a successful return to the ordinary world. Number 16, the master of two worlds. We can see the hero achieve a balance. Moon and Libra, a balance to achieve between who he was before his journey and who they are now trying to use the correct pronouns here. Often, this means balancing the material world with the spiritual enlightenment that they have gained. Master of the two worlds. You see what I'm saying? You have to find a balance. Once you reach that level, you find that balance. And whatever that balance is, that's going to be unique to you. That's going to be solely unique on your perspective and your life and your journey because everybody has a unique story. Everyone. If you can embody that story and bring that to your own music, you're going to be better for it and people are going to relate to it more and it's going to be more personal because you took the journey to get there. You didn't hold yourself back. You didn't let all of that doubt and that outside influence push you down. Not age, not experience, not skill level, nothing. Finally, number 17, freedom to live. We all leave the hero at peace with their life. Heroes Points Quest. I will put I will put them on Patreon. Yes, I'm gonna put all the notes from today's video on Patreon. Just so you know. Speaking of notes, let's talk about number five. Recognizing your music has unlimited potential, and this is why I mark the 14th as a very important moment for all of us. There is nothing more liberating than recognizing the unlimited creative potential that lives inside all of us. I just talked about that a couple minutes ago. The unlimited creative potential that lives inside all of us. If you can harness that energy and integrate all of those lessons, the failures and successes of your past, everything that you are, you can open up the space to nurture the best possible outcomes at this time. That was a huge sentence. There is a space inside of each of one of us that has unlimited creative potential. Meaning you have the potential to be as good as the greats. And by greats, I mean Martin Sturzer, I mean Echo Season, I mean AES Dana, I mean Solar Fields, I mean Carbon Based Life Forms, I mean MCTEC, I mean Cell, the guys who are like top shelf. But each one of you has that potential because they all came.
came in with that potential. Therefore, if we come in with that potential, then we all are receiving that as an inherent part of being human. Each time you embark on this journey, you are not only calling upon the knowledge and experience that lives inside of you, but everyone became who came before you and is here now. Therefore, if you have that experience, you're sharing it with the greats, the masters. And, and this could go so far, we could even dive back before recorded music. The masters of our time, who've lived here, who've died here. Going back to Carl Sagan, the pale blue dot. also be relatable. Use those references. Use the sounds that you really want to hear. Use all of those sounds and bring them back. Say, I have the potential to do that. The only thing that stands between you and the goals and ambitions that you have in mind is yourself. And nothing is more important than the actualization of that energy at this time. I'm telling you this from a personal place. Nothing is more important than the actualization of that energy. Channel it. Use it. And then, not only that, share it. Because if we start realizing that potential and then we give it away, once your cup is full, then you can begin to give that energy away. That's why we're doing this class here today, because my cup is full more to give. This is what I do for our living. On Patreon, on YouTube, every day. And my cup is full and therefore I'm giving it to you so you can take that energy and that potential and realize it. Believe in yourself and believe that anything is possible because it truly is. If you do this, you'll find yourself more motivated, more ready, and more musically evolved than you have ever been before. This is what it's all about. I truly feel that there's so much positive energy that's coming through at this time. There's so much that we have to pull from. Because in a world where you're trying to balance being a part of the world, being a part of a family, being a part of a, anything that you have already engaged yourself in, you can acknowledge the fact that it's difficult to be an artist. So if it's that difficult to be an artist, that's part of that call to adventure. That's that resistance against you. That's that authority figure who's saying, you better make it work. And if you don't make it work, what are you doing? Are you wasting your time? You can be the one, you can be the hero in your story who proves them wrong and says, it wasn't a waste of time because I did it for myself. I actualized those parts inside of myself that were just waiting with unlimited potential to be realized. So if you do that, other people will start to take notice. And if they start to take notice, they will recognize that in you. And that spark will continue. And that's how we spread this message. That's how we spread all of this goodness that lies within the genre of ambient music. It's through the collective knowing and sharing that we all build and evolve and grow together. Straight up. So I am here as a pillar to say to you that look look at this world that we have here. Look at the look at the possibilities that we have. Never in a time have we had more tools available, more resources available, more interest in everything that we're doing to just 
blow the whole thing into oblivion. It's all there. You just have to capture that. It can be as simple as a four note sequence with a filter. I see Dash is here. He made a one hour ambient face plant thing this morning. I have yet to watch it, it's so cool. Like literally trying something new, trying something you've never done before. And that's what this was yesterday. You can see it on Patreon. I'm literally doing crazy modular shit. And my board was alive. It was literally alive. Sentient, on its own trip. I love it. I bring this message to you because I care. I do this because it matters. And I truly believe that each and every one of you have that same potential. So again, if you want to support me and you want to learn more, check out my Patreon. I've got tons of masterclass tutorials on there, all kinds of content. I've posted more times this month than there is days in June already. each and every one of you for being here. You're all my friends. Listen, all of you. There's so many I can't even name. But we've started this channel. You remember when we started? May 21st, 2021. We started this channel like this is a whole new chapter. And now we're here. Signs of Life has grown now to almost 5,000 subscribers and we're just getting started still. I appreciate you guys. Thank you all for supporting me. Thank you all for sitting in your time, your attention, and your energy today. Because I truly feel like if we can have sessions like this, then as a community, we're going to become much larger than we already are. And that's why I started, because I wanted to do something great. And there's nothing more reviving, nothing more like, you know, it's just a fresh perspective to really recognize what made you great, what made this channel great, what made, and just go back to it and bring it back again and capture that same essence. You know that feeling when you were young, when you had like, you really just were just into music and everything was raw and real. And you just like, that's that feeling, capture that. right here keep this real thank you guys again i truly appreciate it i'll catch you guys on discord i'll see you on patreon i'll see you back again here real soon exclusive live streams are going off on patreon right now but i promise you i will be back in the future with more masterclass tutorials here on youtube they don't do that well in the algorithm but i know that it gives you something and it gives you a spark or something you couldn't get before. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Christian Signs of Life. I'll see you all on the other side.